On the 12th day of October, Halloween gave to me 12 models dying, 11 Bettys baking, 10 prices burning, 9 seagulls pecking, 8 scientists sneaking, 7 Goldwyn shooting, 6 psychic scamming, 5 naked witches, 4 alien spelunking, 3 UFO abductions, 2 deputy so-and-sos, and a masked hawk being creepy. Welcome back, everybody, to another edition of the 31 Days of Halloween. We are almost at the halfway point, uh, which is sad uh, to think that we're almost half done here. What a bummer. But uh, we've got a good one for you today, uh, just like every day. And <laughs> this one is one of those movies that falls into the category of, I should have seen this before, but I never did. Uh, so we're talking about Mario Bava's Blood and Black Lace, which is a Giallo film, uh, and maybe that's why I never saw it, because I am not necessarily the world's biggest Giallo fan, as much as I sort of admire it. Uh, it is not my preferred genre. Like, I love listening to RGS talk about, uh, you know, a lot of these movies on Hello, This is the Doom Show, and Richard Glenschmidt, if you're not in the know. And if you are, then God bless you. You're, you're living the right kind of life. That is absolutely one of my favorite podcasts uh, because it is very silly and very informative. And I like that combination. So, uh, yeah. So is, Richard talks a lot about um, Giallo films. He and I did a commentary a while back uh, that's on the Patreon, I believe, uh, for the movie Eyeball. And they coined the the phrase uh, over there, Mo Bava is Mo Betta. And I agree with that. I, I think Mario Bava is a fascinating filmmaker. And recently I've, I've been watching some more Giallo and really enjoying it. Uh, Sergio Martino, it turns out, is a director that I actually like quite a bit and find his work in the uh, subgenre of Giallo very interesting. Uh, although, shouldn't it be a mode? Isn't it a sub mode, really, in literary terms? It doesn't matter. But Giallo is fun. Uh, so I'm, I've been working my way through the Bava stuff and boy, howdy, did I really, really enjoy blood and black lace. So if you've never seen it, here's the setup, which is there is this, uh, collection of models in Rome that's putting on a fashion show, uh, a fashion house, if you will. And, uh, surprisingly or uns not, uh, unsurprisingly, uh, for a Giallo film, a masked killer wearing dark gloves and a, a this faceless kind of mask that he he pulls over his head uh, begins murdering these models in Technicolor fashion, in elaborate Giallo esque fashion. Uh, and so this was written by um, Marcello Fondato, Giuseppe Barilla, Barilla. Uh, and Mario Bava as well as being directed by Mario Bava uh, again, because this is essentially a hello. This is the doom show, uh, sub, uh, episode. Um, it serves Cameron Mitchell, sweaty Cameron Mitchell and, uh, Ava Bartok and Thomas Reiner and Ariana Guarini and Franco Russell and Leah Lander and Luciano Pigozzi and Harriet Medin and, uh, Dante De Paolo and it, I mean, basically a bunch of Italian people and, uh, Cameron Mitchell. And so the, the thing about blood and black lace is not necessarily the plot because the plot is pretty much that, right? Like these models start dying. An investigator comes in to try to figure out, you know, who is killing them. It's a, a murder mystery, but in yellow fashion, the thing that makes them interesting is their embracing of the grotesque and the beautiful all at the same time. And boy, oh my goodness, is this movie beautiful. Uh, you've got to see this thing in the best possible quality that you can. The colors just leap off the screen. It is this beautiful Technicolor nightmare. There are some incredible set piece kills. Women in red vinyl uh, raincoats, uh, women being 
um, uh, choke to death underwater so that their eyes pop open as the waves ripple over them. And it makes you feel kind of alternately good and bad because it is the grotesque, uh, you know, lifted to the form of art. And that's what makes it both interesting and, and difficult to wrestle with for myself at, at times. Because on the one hand, this should not be okay. Like, we should not all be enjoying seeing these women be murdered horribly. And yet, Bava uh, just fetishizes it to, to the extent that you can't help but be a little gobsmacked at the beauty of it and the framing of it and the depth of the, the camera and the colors and all of that. It, it's like watching a Peck and Paul movie or something like The Wild Bunch where people are just getting massacred left and right and it's gratuitously violent, but also there's something beautiful about the violence. And when you compare something like this to later slasher movies, in very rare cases is the violence lifted to this level of artistry. You know, Friday the 13th and even Halloween. Halloween's a different animal because it's really not all that gory. It's more a uh, suspense film as much as anything. But, you know, The Prowler and I'm just going through a list of Savini movies, you know, The Burning and those kinds of films that they're, they're certainly exploitative, but they're not quite as artistic as Bava. And that's what makes Bava so difficult to wrestle with, really, is that what he's depicting ought to be completely off-putting. And yet because of the style in which he is depicting this stuff, you can't help but kind of love the movies. And, you know, whether it's Shock, which I, I have a fair amount of time for, Bay of Blood, I think is quite good. Black Sabbath is just gorgeous, as is Black Sunday. And like all these movies that he did that are, you know, clearly Grindhouse adjacent, if not Grindhouse movies, but they're just beautiful. And so I don't know quite how to reconcile that within myself. So I'm just going to say, yes, I recognize that I should probably not be as entertained and captivated by these scenes of brutality towards women as I am. And yet that's where we are. So let's get on with the discussion of blood and black lace. So, um, in addition to all of these gorgeous colors and, and the murders, the plot is surprisingly coherent. When you get to the end of this movie and realize like who has been killing people and why, it makes sense. I mean, it's a little strained, but it totally makes sense. And then, of course, in grand yellow fashion, there is a twist on that. And that, too, makes some sense. I would argue uh, the, the Martino film I watched recently was uh, The Strange Case of Mrs. Ward or The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward. One of those two. Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward. That's what it is. Anyway, when you get to the very end of that movie, it's a little nonsensical. I mean, I love it. But, oh, it is borderline just, you know, garbage. Uh, the plot, I mean, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It requires the kind of luck and timing that would just never, ever happen in the real world. But it's fine because the movie itself is, is really fun and, and playful. And Blood and Black Lace, though, is coherent. It all makes sense within the logic of the film itself. And it's really satisfying in that way and really creepy and, and eerie in its execution. I really, really dug it. I can't say enough good things about Blood and Black Lace. It is maybe a stretch for a Halloween movie, or at least the way I think about a Halloween movie is more, you know, kind of atmosphere and spooky chills and that kind of thing. But Blood and Black Lace, if you want something that's going to be beautiful and violent and, and upsetting... I think that it's just gorgeous. I just love this movie so damn much. And I'm really starting to get to a place where I not only get the appreciation of Giallo films, that I'm starting to develop a real love of them myself. And, you know, both as sort of gorgeous nonsense, but also as 
uh, well-crafted stories when they're done right. And Blood and Black Lace is that done right. And oh my goodness, it's just the best. So uh, yeah, so Blood and Black Lace for our 12th film of the 31 Days of Halloween, absolutely terrific. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, every time I see, you know, one of the Bava masterpieces, I'm reminded again that he truly is one of the great horror filmmakers. Uh, it, you know, he set the stage with Bay of Blood for the slashers that would come after, but I need to, like, I've never seen Hatchet for the Honeymoon and I need to see that and, uh, you know, five dollars for an August moon and, you know, all of these um, other Giallo films that Bava did because I think he's just got an eye that is maybe in the top five of horror directors in, in terms of just the framing of shots and the color of them and the richness and texture. It's just beautiful. Again, it's, it's the grotesque made beautiful and Bava may be the best at that. So, uh, yeah, I, I, again, if you, if you've never seen it or if it's been a while, blood and black lace, oh boy, that movie will treat you right. No doubt about it. So that's going to do it for the 12th. We've got one more in our classic run of, Hey, I never saw this movie, but I should have that started with whatever happened to baby Jane blood and black lace. And then we're going to do, uh, tomorrow's, uh, which will be, uh, the final of the classic horror movies and also, uh, the last of the, Hey, I haven't seen this. Uh, well, that's not true. That's not true. The, the next set of movies that we're going to do, uh, the first one of those I hadn't seen, but then we're getting on to, Hey, let's just check out some movies that Bo really loves. So, uh, yeah, so that'll do it for today. Have yourselves an excellent day. Have a spooky day. Be sure you are subscribing. Uh, as I've said, if you're listening to this on the Legion podcast feed, please jump over to the Dark Parade where you can get more of this nonsense. And if you're listening on the Dark Parade, be sure you're checking out uh, the Legion podcast feed. This is a great advertisement to uh, check out that feed because that's where you can find Hello, This is the Doom Show. And so much of my appreciation of Giallo comes from that show and from Richard and Simon and all the guys that uh, co-host with Richard. So it's a, a terrific show. And be sure you are going to legionpodcasts.com where you can find uh, this post as well as all the other posts uh, for the 31 days of Halloween. And you can uh, hook up with all the social media feeds. In particular, I would invite you to uh, check out the Discord server where I often am. Uh, this week, uh, as I've mentioned, if, if you haven't been listening... I will be uh, out of pocket this week because as you listen to this, I am currently on a cruise ship in the Bahamas. Uh, but I will be back this weekend and, uh, and, and catch up with all the messages and stuff. So please drop by. Let me know what you think of Blood and Black Lace. Let me know what you think of the movies that we've done before. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's still time. You could always uh, give me a shout and say, hey, why don't you do this movie? And if I haven't done it in the previous two years and I don't already have it scheduled, there's still time for me to slip one in. Uh, so please uh, don't hesitate to do so. Uh, but I look forward to talking to you. Have yourselves a wonderful Halloween, crisp, uh, cool afternoon. If you happen to be lucky enough uh, to be in a location that is decent enough and kind enough for the weather to match the season. And, uh, and if not, then just go in your house, turn the AC way up, uh, grab some leaves from your neighbor's lawn, scatter them around. Uh, if you can find some spiders, let them loose in your house. Uh, it'll create the perfect Halloween atmosphere. So that's enough out of me. I'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Mm -hmm.